G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, Monday has come around and hasn't the market just kind of picked up? As we can see, there's a lot of green. Now, we don't want to get too excited just yet. It still could roll over, but things are looking promising. And there is a ton of really good stories out there at the moment. The weekend's always a little bit slow with the news stories, but Monday comes around. I mean, it's Tuesday here in Australia, but it's Monday over in the States and other places. And yeah... Look, we're back up above, above 1.5 trillion. You know, gas prices uh, up a little bit. They were at 87, I think, so 93, but they're still way down from the couple of hundred. And we can just see green. So things are looking good in that respect. All right, what's really pumped in the last 24 hours? Because, I mean, look at Bitcoin. That's gone up 8.2% and Ethereum up 8.4%. So that's good. What's really pumped? All right. Phantom, I wish I had have paid more attention to this. This has been on a tear and continues to go up. Pancake Swap has rebounded. Ravencoin doing well. Look, I mean, look at all these. These are double digit sort of gains. It is just the market is a, basically a fair bit exuberant again. So that's really good, but it's still really kind of based around Bitcoin. If Bitcoin can't get over that sort of 52 ish thousand dollar mark it could roll over again it's a possibility we don't know yet we'll just have to wait and see all right what about what's you know continued with the correction or dumping whatever you want to call it pretty much nothing cardano's down a little bit but hey what can you do it did so well zk swaps had a severe correction again from outside the 100 to inside the 100 you know, the, these kind of things quite often happen. That's not to say ZK swaps is no good. I, I don't know anything about it personally. But, you know, things, it, it could be a bit of a pump and dump. And again, I th think we saw a bit of a Bart Simpson head uh, pattern on there. But really, almost nothing is down whatsoever. It's really some of the stable coins that are down a little bit. And even some of them are just kind of neutral or up a tiny little bit. But nothing has really lost in the last 24 hours so that's great you know the start of the week hopefully we're off to bigger and better things but we'll have to wait and see and you know did you take advantage of the dip now i didn't buy any ethereum or any bitcoin and i'm not upset that i didn't i did buy some uh altcoins though so i bought uh and i already spoke about this so i bought some Aave, not too much Aave, just a little bit of Aave. bought myself some more uh, SNX and I bought uh, some more of the graph so I'm pretty happy with those purchases they're all coins that I really fundamentally believe in and uh, are going to hold on to long term I will sell you know probably about half of them by the time I think that we're at the peak but the other half I plan to hold on to and I have lots of really really good news stories I mean have a look at it there's tons of them we'll just go through them but first of all let's have a look at the Bitcoin chart so we can see here, here was the kind of downtrend and we broke out of it and we broke out of it really, really strongly. I don't have the volume here at the moment, but I think there was a big spike in volume. Most people were pretty happy to kind of buy Bitcoin around about this kind of $45,000 mark. They got past the weekend, they believe the retracement was over and bang, it was bought up. So I do think we're going to get back to here quite quickly in all fairness. I, I think by the end of this week, we'll probably be up around here. Unless, and we always need to consider what if that doesn't happen, this could roll over and maybe come back down uh, and retest this line. I don't think that's what's going to happen, but I just have it in the back of my mind that this is a possibility. This is something that could happen, but I think this is a real clear breakout and this indicates that we're ready to move and to go to the upside the downside was enough and again it really came back and kind of retested some support here we can see sort of here there's a some confluence here almost sort of there we weren't really too far off from there and then again we were really bouncing off it uh, and then it just said look that's enough we're back to being bullish and look there is information about people getting in so let's go to the first story Goldman Sachs plans to relaunch its cryptocurrency trading desk Goldman Sachs is planning to reopen its cryptocurrency desk at the as the industry marches forward and uh, at accelerated rates. So yeah, we had a pullback. And again, basically, this is like the whole market. This always happens. You know, you can just go again. Look at this big exuberance that we had here. Whew, what a pump. Fallback. Bit of a dead cat bounce. 
fall back. Thought we were going, ah, and we went just a fraction sort of lower. But then look what happens. We just go on the next run. This is perfectly normal. As long as you understand the cycles and you believe we're still in the midst of a bull run, don't worry about these pullbacks. They're not really something to worry about. You just got to simply hold. And again, I have to say this, it's not financial advice. It's just my personal opinion. I'm not a financial advisor. But for me, I knew I, I didn't sell anything. I did sell, well, that's not true. Again, once we got to uh, around about sort of 50,000, once Bitcoin got to there, I sold roughly 10% of all my crypto just so I had cash on the side because I had made uh, some good gains by then already. So I was pretty happy. I still have all of that money sitting, well, not all of it, 99% of it sitting on the sidelines and it'll, and it's earning interest. I will likely hold on to that until the next bear market, in all fairness. I, I don't think I'll buy back in. But I still dollar cost average. And so what I'm waiting for now is I'm dollar cost averaging, but I'm waiting for the next dip. The next time I see uh, some good red, I'm just going to save up my cash uh, and that's when I'll buy in. Unless something new comes out or I see something that is, you know, basically looking really good at the moment. So Goldman and Sachs uh, getting back, you know, into cryptocurrency and opening their trading desk because of the accelerated rates that are happening. So reports on Reuters today revealed that American multinational investment bank Goldman Sachs will offer Bitcoin futures and non-deliverable forwards on behalf of its clients starting next week. According to sources familiar with the matter, the move is part of the bank's effort to take advantage of the fast-growing crypto space, which is gradually becoming an investment of choice for institutional players. Again, we've only got about 5% of institutional players in at the moment. But the ones that are in are buying up. And again, we've got more stories, particularly this one. Twitter. Speculation has run wild if Twitter would be the next giant to put BTC on its balance sheet following plans to raise $1.25 via a convertible senior notes offering. The giant social media platform Twitter has announced plans to raise $1.25 billion through a convertible senior notes offering. Although the company breached corporate... Uh, Purposes as the main reason, cryptocurrency proponents spec speculated if the firm could pull a micro strategy and allocate funds into BTC. I think that's exactly what they're going to do, and I think a lot of other firms are going to follow. Micro strategy, they're still buying. I've got more news about that. They did the $1.2 billion worth of uh, rounds not long ago and bought more crypto. Well, they're still buying more again, and we'll get to that. All right, S2F model. The popular floater stock cross asset model uh, is intact as a new orange dot was printed following February's close, despite the most recent uh, slump in Bitcoin's price. Plan B, creator of the well-known stock to flow Bitcoin model, took to Twitter to provide an update on how the cryptocurrency is performing following the latest developments in the market. BTC continues to follow the S2F cross asset model like clockwork, despite the most recent uh, correction and is still on track to reach 288,000 by 2024. There you go. That's not too bad. So for me, that basically means just hold on to my Bitcoin. And here's the stock to flow. There we go. We can see that it wasn't going up anymore. We had an almost sideways sort of dot there. But look, that's happened before over here and it's even had dots that then went down for a little bit. So this is still on track. Again, 288,000. It's going to be somewhere up sort of around here and I'll most likely go over. Whether it takes to 2024, I think we see that see that by around about 2022. Whether it's uh, sort of late 2021 or early 2022, we'll have to wait and see. But look, it basically says it's planning to be over a million dollars by around about sort of 2025. So very interesting. All right, Ethereum gas fees. So Matic, XDAI and Loopring rally as uh, Ethereum gas fees rise. I do think Ethereum 2.0 is going to come sooner rather than later. I think it will probably be rolled out by the end of this year. And I think, you know, that along with all the layer two solutions will really sort of push Ethereum forward. Yes, it's struggling a little bit under its own weight and its own success, but I really do think it's going to come back uh very very hard and very very fast and while things like you know cardano and all these other chains are doing quite well i think ethereum will rise back to the top that's just my personal opinion i don't have any inside information it's just based on my gut feeling this is what they always do 
they put things off for as long as they can because it's still in the testing phase and when they're kind of really not so much forced to but when they're like yeah all right now we have to make a move and they've given themselves plenty of time to do all the testing they'll make it happen they're not simply going to sit back and let you know cardano polka dot cosmos and other chains take over them they just won't do that but they will hold off they absolutely will hold off until they're kind of forced to is a, is a way to put it all right and speaking of commerce uh commerce cosmos cannabis focused crypto firm reveals why it's switching to cosmos a crypto company that aims to support cannabis businesses and enable shoppers to find quality products has announced it is switching to the cosmos blockchain a global blockchain technology company that's helped that helps cannabis companies to go to cashless has announced that it is upgrading to Cosmos. Bitkana was built to support marijuana businesses that struggle to access financial services from banks, credit card companies and online, and online payment providers, with firms often having to stump up excessively high transaction fees because of a lack of choice. Well, hello Cosmos, and this is bullish for Cosmos. Uh, and I'm glad uh, I still have some cosmos left I sold half of it quite a while ago because it wasn't doing that well it was still it made me some money but just didn't do that well I may have to look to get back in I may have sold prematurely but look I, I still got a bag and I can just hold on to that as well all right and again we got a lot of stories to get through here all right more Bitcoin Michael Saylor's micro strategy just keeps buying Bitcoin he's not done MicroStrategy uh, has an acquisition of another $15 million worth of Bitcoin as MicroStrategy continues to dollar cost average into Bitcoin. They're not done. So they're still going. Look at him. What an absolute, you know, he's either going to be a mad, brilliant scientist or just mad. <laughs> we'll have to wait and see. Obviously, at this price, he thinks, you know, Bitcoin uh, is going to be worth a lot more even than what he's buying it now. I'm sure there will come a point where he will stop buying into Bitcoin. I would be interested to see if he will go into anything other than Bitcoin or if he's just a full Bitcoin maximalist, which I get the feeling is, and look, good on him. I'm not hating on anyone for that, but that's not me. I'm not a maximalist to anything. I think there's a ton of room for growth in the crypto space in general, blockchain, the whole lot. I don't think it's just going to be Bitcoin. All right, Tether. So they're being held to ransom. The USDT stablecoin issuer says it received a $23 million ransom demand payable by Monday. The deadline has since passed and Tether isn't paying. All right, so hackers have threatened to release sensitive company documents supposedly belonging to USDT stablecoin issuer Tether unless the firm sends a $500 Bitcoin ransom to a specified address. Well, they've already had the regulators go after them and they've settled so yeah i wouldn't be paying that either but interesting that somebody's out there thinking that maybe they have something on them uh, and are trying to you know stand over them uh, and extort them all right uh, mass adoption visa a recent visa survey shared with brazilian media revealed that 25 percent of all credit card users in latin america would like to experiment with cryptocurrencies if payment processes gave them the opportunity to do so. Again, you know, I've spoke about this numerous times. It's happening. It is just, it won't happen overnight. It's going to take some time. But this is all part of what makes me think this could be a prolonged Bitcoin cycle. Because this will slowly keep growing. It's not like, you know, if this keeps growing, and a lot of people are saying that, you know, the peak is going to be somewhere around sort of September this year to March next year, if it kind of follows the same uh, pace it has before. But we just keep hearing news about this. More and more things are coming. It's getting bigger and bigger. And again, it's only 5% of all institutions that are in. It's only still a small percent of the population in general that are using cryptocurrencies. There's so much more growth ahead. Excuse me. I just think this could go on for quite some more time. All right, here's something that's really, really big. If you're a Link Marine holder and into BlockFi, this is very interesting. Link Marines have a new way to make money with Chainlink. Now, Chainlink is going to have staking available later this year, from what I've uh, heard. I don't have an exact date on it yet, but now we can make some money on it. Crypto lending firm BlockFi has paid out more than 20 million in interest on deposits of Bitcoin and Ethereum. 
Tomorrow, the firm will add Chainlink as a new deposit option to earn yield. Now, I have a link down below. Uh, if you want to sign up for Chainlink, you'll get a bonus. Uh, sorry, if you want to sign up for Chainlink. If you want to sign up for Blo BlockFi, uh, you'll get a bonus for doing it, and I'll also get a small bonus. I'm not saying use my link. If you don't want it, that's fine. But I really, really like BlockFi, and I highly recommend it. So if you use my link, thank you very much. I do appreciate that. If you don't and you just sign up all by yourself, still congratulations. This is a great way to uh, you know, earn some interest. Please don't put everything into it. You just never want to have everything into anything. For me, I wouldn't really go much more than about sort of 20, 30% of anything into any one thing. Uh, and look, that's just me. You make your own mind up, but I'm making interest uh, on Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, USDC, uh, and now I'm going to be adding some chain link to it. So awesome. BlockFi, and BlockFi announced via news Twitter today indicating that it plans to offer up to 5% a year. That is amazing. On link deposits, interests on those deposits will be paid in chain link tokens. Yes, please. Absolutely. Sign me up. I want some. Let's do it. BlockFi, founded in 2017, offers interest up to 8% on different cryptocurrencies, including Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin, as well as deposits of uh, dollar peg stable coins like Tether and USDC. I go the USDC. Now, speaking of BlockFi. BlockFi clients earn record interest payments in February. Uh, I just got a notification today that I, uh, you know, my new statement is out, so I'll have to go and see how I did. It's not going to be life-changing wealth for me, unfortunately. I just don't have enough uh, money full stop in the crypto space. But look, again, 5 6% is better than any bank is going to pay at the moment. Zach Prince, BlockFi's CEO, said his company paid out 450 Bitcoin, 5,000 ETH, and 6 million in stable coins last month. Crypto lending firm BlockFi posted another record-breaking month in February, paying out over 35 million in interest to its clients. So it lends out money, and basically it charges a premium for doing it, and then they pay that interest to you because they use your you know, crypto and all the rest of it uh, to lend out. Uh, and again, I really like it. Again, it's not financial advice, and please, there are definitely risks with doing this. But I love it and I can't get enough of it and I use it. So if you want to go down and use my link below. All right. Uh, already did that one. All right. Here we go. So hyper Bitcoinization is what we're talking about. This was a very interesting article. Now, hyper Bitcoinization, Bitcoinization is a voluntary transition from an inferior currency to a superior one. And, is, and its adoption is a series of individual acts of entrepreneurship rather than a single uh, monopolist that games the system. Now, there are some downsides to it though. Well, at least some uh, supposed downsides. One individual, the Director of Economists and Social Research Council, John Dan Danielson, hopefully I said that right, Danielson, seems to think hyper-Bitcoinization could be bad news uh, and even reveal an emperor has no clothes situation. Let's go on. So as Bitcoin continues its ascendance, the less fiat will be worth, which in his opinion will be a perverse consequence. He thinks that the coexistence between BTC and fiat currencies creates an unstable equilibrium. If Bitcoin becomes successful, then we will want to use it more and more. That makes it even more successful uh, that we disregard fiat even more. In the end, fiat will be fully displaced as the success of Bitcoin becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Correct, but people will just change their fiat over and anyone who just sort of simply stays in fiat, eventually they'll be forced to. So they won't just kind of lose everything. Fiat is not going to go to zero. It's just losing its buying power. It's continually going down but it can't actually go to zero until no one is ever using it again. At some stage, people will simply be forced to get into these other currencies if fiat truly dies. But that's not going to happen anytime soon. Well, at least not in the next year or two. I think that's maybe still another decade or two away before anything like that happens. Now, interestingly, on January 17th, 2009, Bitcoin's inventor, Satoshi Nakamoto, spoke about the crypto's assets ability to become a self-fulfilling prophecy so even he she they mentioned it 
It might make sense just to get some in case it catches on. Well, no more famous last words. Nakamoto wrote more than a decade ago. If enough people think the same way, that becomes a self-fulfilling fulfilling prophecy. Once it gets bootstrapped, there are so many applications. If you could effortlessly pay a few cents uh, to a website as easily as dropping coins uh, in a vending machine. He, she, they, such intelligence such you know you know foresight it's unbelievable i i really hope that you know whoever he she they are are still here to see what has happened you know there's talk that it was uh, i think how finney was his name and he's passed away uh, and that'd be really sad if he didn't get to see if, if he was you know the originator and he didn't get to see what this has become and again, people worry about the you know couple of million Bitcoin that are possibly owned by Satoshi Nakamoto and what happens if they suddenly get sold. You know what happens? They get bought. I'm buying them. The, the crypto market is not going to crash and burn because Satoshi Nakamoto suddenly sells his, her, their uh, Bitcoin. They'll just get bought up. There's a demand for it. It's here to stay. It's, it's not dying. All right, BTC balances. Uh, so BTC balance sheets, 42 companies hold 1.3 million Bitcoin worth more than $65 billion. Since the company MicroStrategy shifted a lot of its treasury reserves into Bitcoin, and they're still doing more, a great number of companies have followed the firm's lead. Yes, but still only a small amount. According to the web portal, uh, BitcoinTreasuries.org, data shows that 42 companies are now represented on the list and the businesses hold more than 65 billion worth of Bitcoin. So the corporate Bitcoin stash is now 6.43% out of the 21 capped, uh, million cap supply. And there's only, I think, two and a bit million left to be mined. It has become a trend to add Bitcoin to a company's balance sheet. And the company MicroStrategy invoked the trend when the business purchased, excuse me, $250 million worth of BTC. Since then, a great number of companies have followed suit and BTC's sky value has rocketed. It's going to continue to go up. Yes, we're still going to have more retracements. Yes, we'll possibly even have another bear market or two, the ones where it corrects 50%. But in the long term, this is just something more and more businesses and people are going to get into. And I really think in sort of 10 to 20 years time from now, it, it'll likely be the most dominant uh, cryptocurrency. And if not the most dominant, it just will be the store of value. It's gold 2.0. For instance, at the end of 2020, 29 firms held around 1.1 million Bitcoin, worth more than 30 billion using exchange rates on December 28th. Moreover, at the time, the 29 companies owned 5% of the entire 21 million uh, Bitcoin supply. Today, according to uh, BitcoinTreasuries.org statistics, the numbers have changed a great deal. There's now 42 companies, it's almost doubled, listed on the web portal, showcasing firms from all around the world that hold Bitcoin treasuries. But this number is going to be hard to grow because it just keeps getting more and more expensive. So I don't think companies would be able to get more than maybe 10 to 20 percent of all the bitcoin well that's not true i suppose over time they absolutely could hence why for me i, I you know my personal opinion not financial advice is just buy some hold it don't ever sell it that's my personal opinion not financial advice i you know you can try and sell at the tops and the bottoms and all the rest of it and i have done that absolutely to get some of my money back but look the majority of the Bitcoin that I have, I'm literally never going to sell. I'm just going to hold on to it. Again, I got some, you know, in BlockFi earning interest, uh, you know, and I'll find other things to do with it. You know, there's going to be other smart contracts and things that come out, Aave, Synthetics Network, all that kind of stuff. Uh, not that you really put Bitcoin uh, onto those. It'd be wrapped Bitcoin. But there's going to be other ways to earn interest from it in the future. More and more things are coming. Elrond, you know, there's just tons of things out there. This is the future. All right, Cardano. So more big news for Cardano. The Cardano blockchain, which runs ADA token, will become a multi-asset chain with its hard fork today. So Mary. Uh, named Mary, the hard fork will allow users to create tokens that run on Cardano natively 
just as ADA does. Enabling new tokens was one of the first big use cases that caught on for Ethereum, enabling 2017's multi-billion uh, dollar initial coin offering splurge. So Mary is here. We'll have to wait and see how many people are now going to go over to Cardano projects, I should say, and start building on it. Now, the price has started to come down just a fraction. And again, it might be, you know, uh, by the rumor, sell the news and all the rest of it. So we could see a... Uh, a reasonable size retracement from Cardano, but look, maybe this just keeps pumping. But usually, once this comes out, there's a bit of a sell-off. All the hype's gone and gone. Uh, and again, they bought the hype and now they've sold the news. All right, last but not least, this is extremely interesting. I find this quite funny. Mining Bitcoin for heat, strawberries and chickens. More and more people are turning to crypto mining to heat their homes and businesses and earn a profit at the same time. This is smart money right here. We all know how hot these things can get. If you live in a cold place, you know, if you're paying for a heater, why not pay for a, a Bitcoin miner? Uh, it, it will heat the place up and you will make money. Will you make a lot of money? Uh, depending, possibly not a whole lot of money, but even if you're making just a little bit of money, is that not better than running a heater which j that just simply costs you money? Sometimes you need to really forward think. Now, there are strawberries growing in the village of Neuville, Quebec, in the middle of a Canadian winter. The small farm uh, is funneling the excess heat from crypto miners to battle the frost and grow a rarity for the region. So strawberries. And again, there's more things going on to people who've got uh, carbon neutral houses running solar power. And rather than have heating systems, they're doing crypto mining. Uh, again, they're probably not making a whole lot of money, but they are making money as opposed to just not making money and paying money for heaters. So this is next level thinking, and I really do think, uh, again, this is kind of the future. I don't think Bitcoin mining will stay the way uh, it is at the moment. I think they will develop. I do think they'll possibly go to a proof of stake type model maybe in the future. But again, that's just me thinking that uh, because, you know, yeah, this just continues to go up the amount of power that's used i think a proof of stake model might be something that comes in the future but again i could be wrong we'll just have to wait and see uh that's probably a you know it could be pie in the sky stuff i just think that's the way it will likely go into the future i don't think it's happening anytime soon but maybe you know within the next sort of 20 years once you know it's using so much electricity that they might have to look into something like that the core development team will have to go you know what proof of stake uh, is the better method because it might just get left behind particularly if the power usage just continues to grow and grow and grow that would definitely be an issue all right that's it from me this has been a pretty of a lot uh, pretty long one uh, and I do apologize if there was if it was too long and there was stuff in there that you didn't really care for or want to hear about uh, I'm super excited Again, the mo Monday in the States, it's Tuesday here in Australia, but Monday in the States is here. Everything started to heat up again. We just need to wait and see if this can hold or if this simply rolls over. I don't think it's going to roll over. It's looking pretty good at the moment, but you never know. We still could have another sell-off sort of come down again to this kind of 50-day moving average before we then bounce higher. I don't think that's what's going to happen, but it's definitely a possibility. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Everyone should be on that gain train at the moment. It's looking pretty good. And I'll see you next time.